Ja. Hi. Hello. Can you Hello? hear me? Hey, there we go. Okay, cool. Hi. Sorry, I'm just a little bringing everything up. Cool. Oh, cool. The entire screen shows up for you. That's good. I put it back to 36 tall, so I guess I'll just leave it like that. Like Nice. I thought I had taken some notes. I'm looking for some notes that I'm not seeing. Um, where are um, we at? What should we do? I remember you created a separate file for something. I forgot what that thing was, but you made a separate file. And then you linked it to that note. Probably cornerhit.org. Yeah, we started to draw things out. Still not seeing uh well, I guess we could talk about it. Uh what should we do? Uh I think we're still stuck on the corner problem, right? Yes. And how what did we what are you want to do about that um i don't know um i know we decided that there are two things to track is when a ball hits another wall was that wall adjacent to the wall it just hit and is that distance small yeah
how should we do that? I am not exactly sure. Um, I think we need to track every time we detect a wall hit, we should track where we are and which wall we hit. And then we'll have um, at all times the, the piece of information of the wall that we hit last time and where we were when we hit that wall. And we can use that the next time we hit a wall. So the next time we hit a wall, we can say, right now we're hitting a wall. Where were we the last time we hit a wall and which wall was it? Uh-huh. So, yeah, I guess it would be... So, okay, so... We, okay, yeah. I think... Wait, why didn't we do that last time? We started to. Um, and then we realized... We realized that the variable that we were using was already being used for the other thing. Um, so we needed to come up with better variable names. Um, also, uh, I, I think we might be able to do better than, where is it? Um. Well, yeah, so like we, we have prior wall hit and wall hit, and um, I think we can do better than prior wall hit and wall hit. I think we can do, like rather than having two... Well, we can we can just leave it like that. But um, another thing that we could do is uh, instead of having two separate variables, have one variable that is a list of the uh, the walls, and then we can Ooh. push onto one side and pop off the other side. Um, and okay, then, I didn't understand that terminology, but I think I understand the concept. Uh, we'll add the every time we hit a wall, we add which wall we hit onto one side of that list, and then we yeah, will right. take a wall off of the other side of that list, and that way we always have the two most recent walls. Mm -hmm. So it's looked like this. So if the wall hit equal and done, done. Mm -hmm. Except, um, I think wall hit is currently being used to track location. Let's see where where do we actually set it to something oh well here we're using it for detecting uh distance or calculating distance so yeah, i think right here in update we just hit somewhat a little zero. Oh, that's gonna be weird because that's a tuple or whatever it is yeah or a tuple can we store a tuple um, within the list 
Yes. Uh, yes, you can. Um, so you're using this to track location when you hit a wall. Where? Yeah, you, you were just there. Um, Update. Wait. Yeah. yeah, so rather than saying wall hit is equal to this, what we can do is say wall hit dot push, I believe. This. Uh, and then we need to surround the whole thing in parentheses. So now we're pushing. Nope, I guess push is not the right thing. Oh, uh, it's saying that because it thinks that it's a none type to begin with. Um, oh, it could be an empty list to begin with. Hmm, true. Instead of none. So this will be a list of locations, and then we don't need prior wall hit. Um, yeah, so here, list of unknown. Oh, wait, so you want to make a continuous, wait, sorry, did I not, so you want to make a continuous list of the coordinates each time a ball hits a wall so like yeah so for oh, example okay let's say that we start off with a completely empty list so uh time zero we have a completely empty list um time 300 let's say we hit the first wall uh and that's at location zero zero just to make that easy to type so then sometime later we hit uh we hit uh so we had zero zero and then we hit um what's the next wall? Oh zero zero is a corner. Uh let's say one hundred. 100, 100, 100, 0, and then we hit zero, 0, 200, and then sometime later we hit uh, the next wall, so we start off with this, and we add Let's say that we go back and hit like 500, zero, and then we, we start off by adding that one, and then we take this one off. Oh, okay. Then we have this, and then sometime later, we add the next wall. Okay. Just keep doing that. Sense. Okay. Um, and then we can inspect. Oh. We can inspect this list, and say, are those locations close enough? 
And then we can do something similar with a list containing um, the which wall was hit. So like, in addition to this list, which has location, we could have, oh no, which wall is that? That's the ceiling. Ceiling. And you might think, well, couldn't we just calculate which wall it was from this location? And the answer is no, because we don't know what direction it was traveling. I guess we could track what location and what direction, um, and then calculate which wall it was from that. But it might be at some location that's very near to two different walls, and depending on which way it was traveling, it would hit one of them or the other. Anyway, so ceiling, and then the next one. I think you get the idea. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool, okay. because I don't want to type it all out. <laughs> yeah, um, no, it's okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But then now I just had another realization. Yeah? Is that when we go super fast, I notice that sometimes a lot of the corner hits that don't register don't like some of the corner hits that look like corner hits don't register and i feel like that might be because of the way we detect if it hits a wall right because it goes it goes back how much it went through the wall yeah so would that cause because then that then the prior wall hit like coordinates would that be the wall or would that be where it went through the wall um or how far it went through the wall yeah i think the way that we have it right now we uh like in this scenario where it's traveling down really fast if the very next frame it would be below the wall like down here so it was here, and then the very next frame it was here. I think we record this location as the location of the wall hit. Okay, so that's why I think Or sometimes... maybe it's by the time we get here, we record this location as the wall hit. Okay. And then I we think... do some math to update that we shouldn't actually be down here, we should be back up over okay. here somewhere. Something. Okay. Anyway, I think you were saying that's a to do because I think when we go, we're going super fast. It's not registering. Like maybe we make it so that instead of yeah, I think that's another to do that just popped up. Yeah, we could do something like uh calculate where we would actually hit the wall like draw a line between these two spots yeah it wouldn't be too bad out I think the it intersect just, it would just be triangles yeah right? uh and I, it would not be too bad but it is i don't know maybe it'll maybe it would be better to do that and then do the corner detecting like maybe doing that would make corner detecting trivial um but I don't know. Hard to say. I feel like okay. I think that's a more interesting problem to me right now. Than the corner detecting. Yeah. Okay. Because I think I. Um. Have we a... do have the corner detecting in our notes, so we're not gonna forget. Oh, there's a to do. Look at the file corner hit dot org. Hey, look at that. Um, no, I was looking for a note that said, uh, use four different variables, because I'm pretty sure that's what you said at the end of the session last time. You said, or maybe I said it, um, but the four different variables are which wall did we hit, which wall are we hitting now, and what location are we, and what location were we. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so we can go do some math to calculate 
where we intersect. If we went like that, for example, that one yeah. would be super easy. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Because so... I think all. What what would it be? It would just be. So it would just like find the line in between the two points that it was at, and then find the middle of that line, and then do y one minus y two. No, and then yeah, you just find the middle of that line, and that would be the coordinates. Uh, that would be the point of the wall. Um. Find okay. What did you say? Find the line between the points, and then. And then you would find the midpoint of that line. Info of that line. Um, did you say anything else? Uh, that midpoint would just... I'm pretty sure that midpoint would be where it hit the wall. Okay, and what would you call, what would you put here for, like, a quick note about what this is? Um. I don't know. Yeah, that would. Uh, maybe, like more accurate wall hitting okay um so i i think this is not quite right i don't think it's going to be the midpoint every time but other than that, I think this is good. Uh, we need to find the... Put a line between the two points that we know about, like where it was and where it is. Um, and then find something. Somewhere on that line is definitely where it hit the wall. That's true. It's not so of necessarily the middle. What? Instead of midpoint, it would be when one of the either x or y was equal to zero. Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, or the other end. <laughs> like, uh, zero would be the ceiling and the left wall, but then the other number for the floor and the right wall. Oh, yeah. Um, so what we have is, let's say that uh, this is our, our wall, and this is our ball, the ball. Actually, this one's easier. easier. So... Then the ball goes over to here, and then we draw a line between them. We have two lines, and we have, uh, we're trying to find where they intersect. And the way I'm drawing this, it is in the midpoint, um, but it, like, it doesn't, I don't think it has to be. Like this very well could be over here. I don't. I don't see any fundamental. Oh, whoops. 
I don't see any fundamental reason that this couldn't happen. Like it could be further to the left or to the right or somewhere. So how do you calculate that? How do you find the intersect between two lines? No, how did how do we calculate where the ball should be? Um, we always know where the ball is, and we've always recorded where the ball was on the last frame, and then we are constantly checking, did we cross a boundary? Did we go from inside the thing to outside the thing? Oh, okay. Also, yeah, okay. And it's definitely not half because of we, we decided to multiply 1.9. Uh, that is, we are sort of simulating uh, friction and energy loss due to sound and stuff and ball deformation. Um, like, the ball slows down every time it hits a wall. Yeah. A little bit. So... We're having it go from, let's say that it was going perfectly up and down. Um, we're having it go from 1.0 times whatever speed it is going down to almost 1.0 times this, that same like that same speed, but like instead just 0.9 in the opposite direction. So we have to cancel out the downward speed. That's one, and then go upward almost that same amount that's 0.9 yeah okay um and that's only in the case of like going straight up and down um yeah so we want to find the intersect between two lines uh how do you find the intersect between two lines? Find intersection of two straight lines. We don't have to worry about curves, so that's good. Three ways to algebraically, algebraically well, find well, yeah. Well, what? one way is just plugging in the equation into the other equation for the line. Finding the intersection, write the equation for for each line with, uh, uh with, with on the left side. <laughs> uh, I think maybe this summary got chopped off or something. If necessary, rearrange the equation. So we should be able to do this and uh yeah uh so should we go look at this page or do you know how to do it already now that um, now that you remember that well yeah i mean you can go look at the page yeah i mean I don't know, maybe this page doesn't actually say the right thing. Um, whoop. Alright, so... They have... They write the two right. equations. Oh, yeah. Okay. And they get an equation for y. Oh, and then they substitute this probably up here. And then they yeah. they have an equation involving just x. And then they solve for x. Yeah. Except we don't need to do all that because... We need to do it generically. Because we don't have numbers like three we have the x coordinate and the y coordinate so we can't for example do things like know that two numbers 
well, unless they're the same variable, we don't know that they're the same number. And we also, we definitely don't know that like one of them is three times another one. So we need to, we can't do any canceling. We can't do any reducing of fractions. We have to leave everything in terms of variables. Um, mm -hmm. So this nine right here is actually going to be some variable minus some other variable. And rather than having a three, we're going to have something on top divided by some other thing. They're all going to be variables that we can inspect and find the real values. Um, but yeah, they're all going to be variables and we're not going to be able to reduce any of them. And then once we have X, we can then solve for Y. Um, but again, we want to do this entirely algebraically. Um, and there's a little bit of here. Um, we skipped over a step implicitly we know that we're going to be calculating where do we intersect this wall. But the that's because we are humans and we're looking at it and we can tell this and this, like where they are. And the wall that, that this, that would be intersected is this wall. Um, whereas with the machine, we might, the computer, to tell the computer precisely how we knew that it was this wall is going to be a little bit more complicated than just well we'll have to be explicit about it and that's hard um, harder anyway <laughs> it's uh, so yeah how would we let's well okay I think the so we already, actually, we already do it. We already have the logic that says, which wall did we hit? So we can use that to say, okay, where did we intersect that wall? Uh, uh, setting? We already have logic that says, which wall did we hit? Yes. So we can then lean on that and say, okay, we know which wall we hit, and so that's the wall that we need to check where do we intersect it. Where, where, if we're here on one frame and here on the next frame, where do we intersect that wall? Yes. Yeah, okay, yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, um, uh, section of a uh, line for where fall is wait line was and the wall hit and line of the wall okay cool um, all right, uh, how do we do that? Okay, um, so, I think I gotta go back up here and change this back into a nun. So, so it's like, if hit ceiling Q... Okay, wait. Okay, so how do we get the equation between... So we have... Okay, wait. So we have distance above ceiling. We also have... We actually don't have a completely straight line, but 
I don't care <laughs> enough <laughs> right now. Oh, is it because I, of the Because the, the ball time? travels in an arc when it's falling. Oh. Oh. Um, oh. Oh, 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 oh. But it's fine. Oh, actually, it doesn't travel in an arc because that would be a continuous... It actually does travel... It's here, then it's here, then it's here. Between each one of those, you could say that it's a straight line. The lines are not aligned with each other. It's a series of slightly bent lines. Yeah. Anyway, that's fine. We don't we don't need to worry about that right now. Um, that would be a derivative nightmare. Because there would be so many cusps. Yeah, we are approximating. Okay, so here, for example, we have if we hit the ceiling and here we have if a wall was hit, I think maybe we could do it somewhere in here. Let's see. Update velocity, update position. This is for update in general. After we've updated the velocity and the position, does updating the position take care of... Yeah, no, it doesn't. So updating the position only updates in a straight line and it doesn't take into account whether or not a wall was hit and then any of the bouncing. All of that is done here. Um, so after this, we have our current location and the prior location are updated to uh, look like this. So we will be, if we are right now hitting a wall, then we'll be over here. So this will be our current location and this will be our prior location. Um, so we, so this will be true and we will execute this code. Um, yeah. I'm just thinking about like, where would we put the code that calculates where we hit the wall? And I think calling a function inside of this if seems like a good place to do it. Mm hmm Okay. So, okay. So, so distance past left. Is equal to zero minus the self dot left edge. But this doesn't do anything regarding because left edge only when you go to left edge up to left edge. That only deals with the x value. Uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. If if we hit the wall, it'll be the left side of the ball that hits the left wall. So like this side of the wall is, or this side of the ball is gonna hit the wall, and then bounce off. But uh, so what is the issue? Okay, no, well, okay, so to get the line, like, right now I'm just trying to think of how to get the line. <laughs> Is it just, like, taking distance past left, basically? Yeah, um, I'm, I don't know. I'm just kind of confused on how to get the, the line. Let 
let's see. So if a wall was hit, um, yeah, let's think about just the left wall. So hit ceiling, hit left Q, then bounce left. Uh, hit left Q is the left edge to the left of zero and the prior left edge to the right of zero. That makes sense. Uh, and if that is true, then we call bounce left. Um, maybe we could have a self dot calculate left wall hit location. I don't think we'll end up keeping this, but this is what I can think of right now. So I'm gonna go with this until it's obvious what a better way of doing it is. Um, so yeah, I'll just call it calculate left wall hit location. And then we can write this function, and we don't have to worry about all of the other walls. We can just write this function. Um, where are you writing this? This is just above update. Okay. So I'll put mine there as well. Um, Okay, so in here we have access to uh, yep. left yep. edge and prior left edge. What's up? Oh, wait. Okay, so oh, that's what we. Oh, okay, yeah, that. Uh, okay. Those are the points we use. Um, I think left edge is just going to give us the x value of the left edge. Let's go look. Yeah. This is just the x value of the left edge of the ball. And we are dealing with a perfect circle. So we know that the y value is just the y value of the radius or of the center of the ball. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so here we need to do that calculation that we were just looking at. So, wait, when you the, go at a diagonal into a wall, it also... Yeah. Adjusts for Y, right? Or no, it only looks at the X. Like, say you diagonally, diagonally go into the left wall, it's still the leftmost side of the ball that hits the wall, even if it's yeah. traveling diagonally. But how do we like right now looking at the code? It doesn't. We don't adjust for the the y value because like if it goes diagonally up into the left wall, then it should go down diagonally or up depending on the angle it was hit at. Right, because it's not gonna look like. You mean how, like, if if this is the wall that we're hitting, and we come in like this, then we leave like that. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, we take care of that by, depending on which wall we hit, we, we have the x component of our velocity and the y component of our velocity. And then, in this example, we're hitting the floor, so we flip the y velocity. We change the y velocity from this way to that way. And we keep the x part, the x component of the velocity, the same. So the ball still travels this way, but the instead of traveling this way, it goes that way. So then how does that look like when the ball is going fast? The I don't think the speed really matters. Because, okay, well, so we, we, we registered that as a hit, but what if it... Um, so wait, because we... So let's say when we hit the left, we only adjust the X out. And then they just... For the velocity, we only adjust the x. Oh, okay, wait. So that means the slope is velocity y over velocity x. Yeah. Yeah. So we have this, and we have the x values. Now I just don't know how to do the y values. Because the line is usually y equals something. Because here, this is like the equation of two points, right? It's usually y1 minus y2 equals slope times x1 minus x2. That's the that's like the equation of a line. I think. Oh, wait, no, you don't no, it's it's no, it's it's y minus y1 and x minus x1. Um, we don't need that. We y already have minus the slope. Y1, x minus x1. This is if you have a point and a slope. We have a. Um, we have a bunch of different information about the ball. We have two points. We have this point and this point. So, so we could use those two points to figure out the line that goes from here to here. We have the slope, like you said. Um, there's a slight issue with using the slope uh, when you're doing stuff on a computer, which is if it's going straight up and down, then the slope turns into infinity. Um, and so to avoid that, I'm not actually sure what the best way to avoid that is. Uh, but I think if we use this point and this point, we should yeah, be no. okay. My question was, how do we get the Y of the outside point? Because oh, we don't uh, have the, the, the y, y value, by the time we get here, um, we have already updated position naively. So... We were here, and we just said, okay, given that we are here, and we know what our y velocity and x velocity are, and we know how long the amount of time between the last tick and the current tick is, then we can figure out how far we should have traveled from here and in what direction 
So that puts us here. Um, that's what this does. It just naively does figure out what the new location is. Don't worry about collisions. Just, just update where we would be if we could just travel without restriction. Uh, we can go look at update position here. So it ahead, just man. moves us without without looking at whether or not we hit a wall or something. So, which means uh, by the time we get to here, we know we have um, the, this is prior wall hit, and this is, or sorry, this is prior center, and this is center. So we have x1, y1, x2, y2. That's what these are. Okay. So I can just use center, center x, center y, prior, prior and not prior. Yeah, um, but slightly more accurate would be <laughs> for the y you could use center, and for the x value you could use the left side of the ball which we have a, a formula, we have a method that you can call that will give you that. We could even uh, do x, oops, x1 equals something, x2 equals something, y1 equals something, y2 equals something. Um, yeah. What, uh, and so these x1s and y1s would be the x and y coordinate for this spot and the x and y coordinate for this spot. Um, so the x for this spot would be the left hand side of the wall of the ball uh here what is the left hand side of the ball what is the location here what information do we have about the ball here um that it's there. Wait, what? Um, we know the velocity. We know what. What is the x coordinate of that we care about here in terms of the code? Oh, oh yeah, left edge. Yeah. So, well, by the time this code is executing, the ball is actually over here. Oh, so prior. So that would be x2. We could do that. Self dot. Oops. That was weird. There we go. Self dot left edge. And then. I don't know that we have a good way of figuring out what the prior left edge is. Um. I mean, we have it right here. Oh, we have a function for that already. Okay, cool. Yeah. So self dot prior left where is it? Left edge. Okay, cool. And then the y value here. What's the y value that we care about? Center. 
Yeah. So the self dot prior center dot y and then self dot prior or no center dot y. Okay. So that gives us the x and y value here. So it's x1, y1 here. And the... Wait. I have a question. Yeah? Is this slope, if we calculate based off of only one point and the velocities, will that be the same line if we use the other point and only the velocity rather than using two points? Because that would make it a lot easier. We, yeah, we can use, we can calculate the slope. Is slope a keyword? Oh. That's weird. I wonder why it colors like that. Anyway, yeah, we can use slope. Uh, the self dot something. What is the slope going to be? Oh, it's self dot velocity, point. self dot velocity. Oops. Dot y divided by self dot velocity dot x. So I was avoiding using slope because I, uh, this can be zero. And then this ends up being uh, divide by zero if you do that. So I was mm. thinking uh, I was going to use these four numbers because mm, maybe the, you still it's, end up having the same issue. Um, yeah, if x1 and x2 are the same. Uh, yeah, if we divide by x1 minus x2, but we, or x2 minus x1, I don't know if we have to. Um, but yeah, we could we could use point slope. So instead of the, there's actually like a bunch of different forms for uh, the equation. The, there's a bunch of different equations for lines. You don't have to use point slope like y equals mx plus b, you can use like two points such as this, for example. Anyway, um, this is more than enough information to figure out where the y-intercept is. Yeah. This is, this, this is actually a special uh, intersection the y intercept um, and we might be able to just look up how do you do y intercept and find a slightly simpler uh, math equation um, but we will have to leave it there I have to go okay sounds good okay bye yeah bye bye